Hello, everyone. My name is Rodolfo, and I'm a business analyst on the Google Play team. And together with my colleague, Susanna, who specializes in research, we want to talk to you about monetizing in emerging markets. And I know your reaction already. Emerging market has been a frequent topic at our Playtime events. Every year, we bring you the latest insight on how to localize your game for emerging markets, how to reach the players there, or to share the latest success stories from the developer community. So you might think there's nothing new to say about increasing spend in countries like India or Brazil. And actually, your player base is growing strongly there. In fact, for a typical top-grossing app, already four in 10 players are coming from countries like Malaysia, India, Vietnam, or Mexico. And yet, we're not there in terms of monetization. In fact, for the same app, only one in 10 orders is coming from emerging markets. So how can we improve that ratio? And what makes us think that is the right time to do so? Well, traditional barriers to spend in emerging market has weakened. First, high-spec devices are becoming widely available. More than half of the Android devices that were shipped in 2019 had 3 gigabytes of RAM or more. Second, players have now more and more relevant form of payment at their disposal. In fact, just this year, more than 150 million form of payment were added to Google Play in emerging markets. And that's a 150% increase compared to last year. But what's most important is that the mindset of players is getting there too. They're opening up to the idea of purchasing on mobile games. In fact, the growth in terms of new paying users coming from emerging market was more than double than the global average. But let's be clear. We don't have a solution to get every single player in emerging market to start spending money on mobile games. And to be honest, we don't intend to come up with one. But what we do want to help you with is reaching those players who can spend, those players who have no problem buying a treat for themselves, like a burger or an expensive coffee, but for some reason might find it hard to buy digital treats. So, in this presentation, we will take you through ways in which you can improve the appeal of your IEPs in emerging market with the help of behavioral science. Behavioral science describes at a high level how people will behave and making choices under certain circumstances. And it's not about completely changing your game design or economy. It's about small tweaks you can make to your prices and promotion and the way that you communicate them to your players in emerging market to make them more relevant to your markets. So let's start with ensuring that your prices are relevant for players in emerging markets. Why is that important, you might ask? Well, people in emerging market do expect prices uh, to reflect their local needs, as every other uh, person in any single market. But players in emerging market are even more price sensitive. If they feel that the price is not right, they might not purchase at all. In fact, as you can see, 62% of the Brazilian players we've interviewed said that they considered purchasing on mobile games, but felt that the price was too high and ended up not buying. So, we asked ourselves, are prices of uh, IEPs in games locally relevant in emerging markets? We decided to have a look. Step one, we know that games are relatively new to localizing pricing compared to other categories that have been doing this for years. That's why we decided to pick up one of the most known pricing index out there, the Big Mac Index. Step two, we created our own digital index made up of a basket of IEPs from games available worldwide on Google Play. And we compared how those were priced in more than 50 countries. Step three, we compared the two, our Digital Treats Index and the Big Mac Index, to assess if in any given countries the two were not aligned and if that could lead to a pricing opportunity. And what we found out is that our Digital Treats were overpriced in median by 40%. Furthermore, we spotted that it's not 
just about countries like India or Brazil that should be top of our minds. There are several revenue uplift opportunities for developers that are willing to localize their pricing in countries like Mexico, Poland, Malaysia, or Russia. And one way to open up to an audience that is actually willing to spend a bit is by introducing sub-dollar pricing. In fact, while the number of apps that currently offer prices below the dollar is relatively limited, there are countries like Mexico, India, or Indonesia where those already represent a significant portion of orders. And of course, I share your fears. Introducing prices below the dollar might feel aggressive or might feel like not the right things to do in the, right, in the long term, as it might cannibalize revenue. But I'm not suggesting slashing all your prices in half or more. But think more strategically about the portfolio of IEPs you offer and ask yourself the question, is there any specific IEP that has the potential to attract a new audience at a lower price point? And one thing that we learned is that actually offering multiple prices can open up the door to new revenue streams. Let's have a look at this chart together. On the bottom, you can see the number of different price points that a game might have. Now, following the green line, you'll see that the vast majority of games barely even offer more than five different price points. And beyond that, the number drops drastically. Now, if you follow the dark line instead, you'll see that despite the fact that the vast majority of games offer uh, not that many price points, the ones that do, do, uh, do offer multiple price points also capture the vast majority of consumer spend. So as you can see, successful developers are already offering multiple price points to match the needs of their players around the world. But offering multiple price points is just the beginning. You also need to think about what's the first price point that your player will see, as that will have long-lasting consequences on their purchase decision further down the line. In behavioral science, this is called anchoring. Anchoring is the tendency of people to overly rely on the very first piece of information offered when making a decision. Your players will compare your prices both internally and externally. Internally, obviously, to other uh, prices of products you sell in your game. So ensure you offer uh, lower value starter packs in order to help, especially players in, in emerging market, to overcome their initial barrier to purchase. Externally, from the other hand, to other entertainment goods they might have bought in the past, or to other prices they might have as a mental reference, for instance, coins or banknotes that they use every day. So make sure that your prices reflect them. To recap, what we have discussed so far in terms of ways you can make your prices more relevant in emerging market, consider introducing uh, sub-dollar pricing to attract an audience that is more price sensitive. Don't be afraid of uh, introducing multiple price points to match the uh, needs of your players around the world. And think strategically about the first price point you offer because that will have long-lasting consequences on, on their purchase decision further down the line. And now, I'll hand it over to Susanna, who will take you through two other ways you can increase the appeal of your IEPs with the help of behavioral science. Thank you, Rodolfo. <laughs> but just securing the right price point might not be enough to entice players to spend. They need to understand the full value they are getting from their purchases and really feel it's worth it. This is crucial not only to ensure the players will spend for the first time, but it's even more important down the line. We need to reassure our buyers that it's worth spending on IEPs, that there is value in them, so they will come back and purchase them again. And actually, many of the reasons why players are hesitant to spend on games are linked to something more than absolute price tags. They are rather rooted in something uh, that we call a lack of value perception. For example, players might see little relevance of the goods that are being offered because they have no reference points uh, to spend on games or other digital goods. Then, especially in collectivist cultures, uh, spend on gaming might be seen as a bit frivolous or wasteful 
and uh, not seen as valid as spending on other physical items or forms of entertainment. And what's more, benefits of IAPs can feel really intangible, and players might think that they won't last them long enough to make the full use out of them. And eventually, there's just complexity. It might be difficult to make the purchase, having too many, too complex options to compare for, or experiencing friction points in the purchase journey. And you can see those barriers aren't really exclusive to emerging markets. Players will have the same thoughts in Tokyo, Paris, or Amsterdam as well. But what's really important is to realize how much they're dialed up in places like Sao Paulo or Mumbai. Value has greater meaning in markets with lower disposable income, and players are expecting to get the most out of their spend. So one way to drive be better value perception of IEPs is through building the right promotional offering in your game that feels really relevant to the consumer. And behavioral science offers us a couple of ideas how to do so effectively. So let's look into three behavioral science principles that can help us design the right promotional portfolio to really drive that value perception. So the first one is called effect heuristics. Decisions are fairly often made rather very quickly, taking into account how are we feeling about them at that particular moment versus a rather long, detailed, and rational analysis. The second one is about reciprocity. People eventually want to be kind and give back to those who have helped them in some way in the past. And finally, the endowment effect. Um, as humans, we do place greater value in things that we already own or we feel that we have contributed to creating. So how we can turn those three principles into an IEP strategy that's tailored for emerging markets? Let's start with leveraging the effect heuristic and make your IEPs really feel relevant to players there. And actually, a lot of you are probably doing it already, especially in Western European markets or the US. Uh, think about your seasonal activities. We just finished Halloween, everyone sold all those pumpkins and scary items out there, and your teams are gearing up for Christmas. Everything will be snowy. Now let's find equivalents that will feel as relevant to consumers in emerging markets. Think about those markets and really re research holidays, festivals, and cultural events. A great example could be leveraging the Hindu festival in India, or some developers have been really successful in capitalizing on the carnival season in Brazil. Pick up those events that feel really relevant to the audience, that they feel passionate about, and they engage with them in their everyday life. Based on that calendar, think about how you can create locally relevant in-game items, promotions, bonuses, or introduce aesthetics, like on the image here. We can also look into the reciprocity principles and think about how you can make your game more of a social experience and help people connect more to each other. As humans, we are conditioned to the repay, which means that uh, we respond to a positive gesture with another positive one. And for many players in emerging market, being able to invite family and friends to the game and then share and gift them with other resources can really drive a strong sense of gratitude and make them feel that they want to share back. And here you can also look into local customs and culture and really build them into the cycle. You can leverage local festivals or local customs where gift giving is already a well-established cultural norm. And again, just look to Diwali or Holi in India. And finally, we can also look into the endowment effect. As mentioned earlier, benefits of IAPs might feel intangible for players in emerging markets. So think about how you can create a sense of ownership when it comes to IAPs. You can do that through introducing or just even highlighting within the store assets that are more durable or that accumulate over time. 
In particular, this can be leveraged with cosmetics or characters, which are a long-lasting and, what's most important, visible reminder of investment. So here are the three things you can actually do to drive better value perception of your IAPs. First of all, make your promotions relevant to the player through embracing local festivities, customs, and traditions. Second, make your game more of a social experience through introducing reciprocity cycles. And eventually, strengthen the offering and visibility of the more durable IAPs within your store. But we have the locally relevant price points that Rudolfo talked about, and our IAP offering is also tailored to the local market preferences. Even that might not be enough if the value of the offering isn't visible enough to the player as it can easily get lost in the clutter of the game or competing promos and offerings within your store. So let's look into ways how we can strengthen the value, of mess of the value message that it's clearly visible to the players. And players have no doubt they're getting the best deal and making the decision is easy for them. Eventually, it's about simplifying the pur their purchase journey and removing friction points. And again, behavioral science will help us here with two principles uh, that could help us improve the way we present uh, offers to our players so they get that great feeling of value. The first one is really here about making it cognitively easy for the player. The harder something is to navigate or to understand, the less likely people are willing to engage with it and in the end make the purchase. The second principle is really based on leveraging the choice architecture, as the number of choices and the way they are presented will have an impact on the final purchase decision. So how we can apply those two to our store design? Well, let's look on the image here. We can clearly see from the illustration that the pink store is much easier to navigate and comparing offers for the viewer. The choice abundance and the communication overload in Dark Store makes it really, really difficult to focus on, the, uh, on any of the IEPs, and it's nearly impossible to compare any of those offerings. In this case, it's quality over quantity. Ensure that the player has the cognitive ease to make that decision. Present your IEPs in an offer, uh, your IEPs offering in a way that requires minimal time and minimal effort to navigate and finalize that decision. Too many price points, too many promotions competing for the attention of the player makes it really hard for them to determine what's the difference between them. And actually, that's really bad because it can create a focus on price rather than the value those items have. If the player needs to overthink it, if it's too difficult, that moment of hesitation might risk losing your spend. And this is especially valid for players in emerging markets. When you think about that the screen size might be slightly smaller, or the screen size might be cracked, focus on presenting the core offers of the SKUs that you feel will be very relevant to the players only. So you've picked up those SKUs, and now let's highlight the value of them to the customer. It's really important to optimize the choice architecture with visual cues for the player. And actually, here it's up to you. Don't be afraid to experiment and really decide what works best for your game. For example, the first item on the list tends to be chosen more often by consumer. It's just the ease of making decisions. We pick the first one. So think about, uh, this is called order effect. So think about what's your order effect? What items you are presenting at first? Are those the most expensive one? Are those the ones that are having some discount? Or are those the cheapest ones? Think about it and make that strategic decision. How are you going to use it? Another idea to look to is the decoy effect. Adding a third, even slightly less attractive option can change consumer preference and lead them to favor the middle option more. And finally, remember that there are simple visual primes you can use, such as bolding, using a different color, increasing font size, that can drive the attention of the buyer to a particular option and result in an increase of its popularity. 
So here are two things you can actually do to strengthen the value of uh, the value message in the game so it's really visible to the players. You have to make it cognitively easy for the potential buyer. Declutter your promotional offering and declutter your store. Pick what's most important and has the biggest attractive potential. And eventually, don't be afraid to experiment with how and in which order you're going to present those items. The right choice architecture might be the key to success for your game. So I hope you have managed uh, to inspire you to have a closer look into behavioral science and how it can help you monetize more successfully in emerging markets. Let's recap the three steps you can improve the appeal of your IAPs with those players. Step one, ensure you have locally relevant price points. Investigate into sub-dollar pricing, look into introducing multiple price points, and eventually anchor the player by thinking strategically what's the first price point you're going to expose them to. Step two, think about your promotional portfolio. Is it locally relevant? Does it feel locally relevant to the player? Does it build on reciprocity cycles so players can connect and share? And eventually, are you bringing enough of durable IAPs and are they visible enough? Step three, ensure that the value of your offering comes clearly in the game with a simple, easy to navigate store, decluttered offering and optimized choice architecture. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure to share so fast.